In this video, we want to take a look at how do we go about creating variables inside of a Java application. And the key thing is, it's going to depend upon where our variables are being created. So let's take a quick look at that. So inside of our sample three, I have a main method like normal. And if you're used to using C++, you're going to find that creating variables inside of Java inside of a method is identical. Okay, so I can say something like int x and I can give it a default value of zero. Okay, I can say something like double y and give it a value. Like so. You notice how easy it is. I simply specify the data type, the variable name, and then I can give a default value. I don't have to, of course. I can say something like long z like such now you're going to notice that visual studio code is put a little yellow underline this is just because those variables have not been used yet okay it has nothing to do with them being improperly created or anything like that it's just because i've not used them they're saying hey did you create this variable and then not use it on accident like are, are you sure you want to do this that's all that little underline means you're going to find that the data types inside of Java and C++ are almost identical. We have ints, we have longs, we have floats, we have doubles, we have bytes and chars and strings. A couple little things are different in C++. We have bool. Inside of Java, we have boolean. Now, there is a difference in the fact that the Java Boolean is a little bit more strict in how it's going to be used. And we're going to see that when we look at future videos dealing with conditional statements. Okay, so this is all exactly the same. There is a difference, however, if I want to create a class level variable. Class level variables are going to put outside of our main method. And by convention, we're going to put them up at the top just group them all together, make it easy to find. All right, so how would I do that? Well, I would say something like public int size. Public means that anyone can see this. In fact, if I create this object, I have direct access to anything that's public. And that was something we probably looked at inside of C++. And you're probably going, oh, okay, I remember public, that's easy. And you probably remember private too. And I can say something like length. Now, Java actually has four accessor types. Public is the most accessible, private is the least. If I extend this class, I can't see the private data types. For that, I would need something like protected. Protected allows not only an object I create to have direct access to it, but it also means that anyone who extends my object and therefore is a child of that class, they can access it as well. So if you're going to be doing a lot of extensions, you want direct access to it, it's smart to use protected. Now there is one more, and it's called the default. In past times, we used to call it package. That means that I don't put any accessor with it. And so I would simply give the data type, for example, is correct. And if I don't give it a data type, this default value is available to anyone inside of our package. Now we've not talked about packages yet, but that's going to be any other class that's inside that folder. That's the default if I don't give it a access or type. So you can kind of see that. Now with this, you're also going to notice that we are using the camel case. That is our first letter is lowercase. All new words start with an uppercase. That is the standard in Java. So that's what you want to use for that. Now the other thing you might ask is what other ways can I name an identifier? Well, that's going to be things like it can start with an underscore or a letter typically a lowercase letter. Uppercase and lowercase letters are both available to you. 
as our numbers and underscores, obviously, if it can start with an underscore. So just like in Python or C and C++, basically the identifier names are the same almost amongst any language. No spaces, no other special characters besides the underscore. So just kind of keep those things in mind when you're creating your variables, whether it's a class level variable or a method level variable. Now you might be asking, is there something else I need to know? Well, yeah, and you can put a comment in there. So you can go in and say something like, a single line comment, and that's just, two simple forward slashes. If I want to put a multi-line comment, I'm going to do forward slash star and then close it out with a star forward slash. The other thing that I can do is I can write a Java doc style comment and that's going to be a slash star star and then it's a multi-line comment. When I do that, it typically you're gonna see a space indenting it, and then a series of stars that line up with our first star. Anytime I have parameters for my arguments, I'm gonna see at param, and I'm gonna define what are my args. And Visual Studio Code actually created that for me because it knew like, ooh, look, this is something that you might need. And this allows me to define things that can then be taken from a document or application to create your documentation. So that's what the Java docs type of comment is. It's basically just a slight twist on our multi-line comments. So it's very, very easy to use. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If so, please give the video a like. That way I know what you like and what's helpful. Also consider subscribing so you can see more videos on programming with Java.